Elon Musk's Starlink arrives in Ukraine, but what next? A lorry full of Starlink dishes has arrived in Ukraine, with the country's deputy prime minister thanking Elon Musk, who runs the firm. It is not clear where they are heading, but it is likely that they will be used by the government itself. Currently, internet access in Ukraine is fairly good, but it is expected to deteriorate as the conflict worsens. Meanwhile, businesses are trying to get their hands on the dishes as backup systems. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister Mikhailo Fedorov asked for Mr. Musk's help and tweeted a picture of the Starlink dishes arriving. How does Starlink work? Plug in the dish, or terminal as it's officially called, and it will automatically connect itself to the nearest Starlink satellite in the sky, of which there are more than 2,000. The satellite then communicates with the nearest ground station or gateway, which supplies the internet. These gateways are located around the world, but they can't be too far away from the place getting an internet connection. Fortunately for Ukraine, there is a gateway in neighboring Poland. The internet connection travels from the gateway to the satellite and then to the terminal. Users simply plug their router into their terminal and the tech takes care of the rest. One of the major issues with previous iterations of satellite internet is the delay, but Starlink's constellation of satellites is a relatively new technology. They operate in low Earth orbit, so the delay is measured in milliseconds rather than seconds. Usually this would come at a cost. In the UK, it will cost you PS495 for the dish, including shipping, and then a subscription of PS89 per month. There is no indication that Ukrainians will be charged for the service. The terminals need a clear view of the sky in order to work, and there is an app to help users find a suitable spot to place them. Ordinary considerations are overhanging trees and other obstructions. In Ukraine, users will have to consider safety and how they may appear to Russian forces. Once set up, the speed they offer varies, but one user who already had access to a terminal tweeted on Monday that he had reached speeds in excess of 200 Mbps megabits per second for a while. How useful will Starlink be? Business people, such as Stepan Veselovsky, chief executive of Elvive IT Cluster, are trying to get their hands on more terminals, but are finding it difficult. We are trying to buy receivers, but I am not sure whether we will succeed. Currently, internet services in most Ukrainian cities are working well, but it will be important for businesses to have a contingency plan if networks fail, said Mr. Veselovsky. Net blocks which is monitoring internet speeds in Ukraine, told the BBC it has seen internet collapse in some areas, such as Sivirodonsk, the acting administrative center of Luhansk Blaz. Friends and family report no contact with loved ones in recent hours, it tweeted last night. Currently, the firm says it is seeing internet speeds at around 80% of ordinary recorded levels. But Alp Toker of NetBlocks cautioned against seeing Starlink as a substitute for phone networks and broadband. Starlink can provide connectivity by creating a personal hotspot for people who are in the vicinity of the device. So this is very useful for journalists, for resistance groups, or the elected government. Mr. Toker said the devices would be most useful in providing a way of journalists and politicians to get information to the wider world if there is a blackout in Kyiv. Even if it's only from the select few who have been chosen to receive these devices, it's better than having a total absence of information. Is it safe? Some have questioned the safety of using satellite internet during a conflict, suggesting that the dishes could be targeted by Russian forces. In a widely shared Twitter thread, John Scott Railton, a senior researcher at the Citizen Lab, said that Mr. Musk's offer of assistance was good to see, but warned users to be careful, noting, Russia has decades of experience hitting people by targeting their satellite communications. The BBC is not responsible for the content of external sites. But Mr. Toker said that while there is some risk when it comes to individuals being detected through, say, drones flying overhead, the greater risk to ordinary citizens was more likely to come from having to explain why they were in possession of the device. What other options are there? Starlink is not the only satellite internet company operating in the region. Commercial satellite internet company Viaset said that on 24 Feb, the day Russia invaded, it suffered a cyber event, 
affecting broadband services. The company has not said who or what is behind it, but said it was experiencing a partial network outage, affecting internet service for fixed broadband customers in Ukraine and elsewhere on our European KASAT network. Sanctions in response on Russia. Tokyo Asian stock prices have fallen after Western nations moved to tighten sanctions against Russia and as President Vladimir Putin escalated tensions by ordering Russian nuclear forces on high alert. U.S. futures fell, with the contract for the S&P 500 down 2.5 percent early Monday. The stock markets in Tokyo, Hong Kong and Shanghai declined while Sydney was higher. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has caused markets to swing wildly, given the potential impact on inflation, energy supplies, and other areas. The Russian ruble has weakened sharply, but was steady early Monday at 83.86 to the dollar. Japan joined moves by the U.S. and Western nations to impose sanctions on Russia, including blocking some Russian banks from the SWIFT global payment system. Berlin the United Nations nuclear watchdog says missiles have hit a radioactive waste disposal site in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv, but there are no reports of damage to the buildings or indications of a release of radioactive material. In a statement late Sunday, International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Grossi says Ukrainian authorities informed his office about the overnight strike. He says his agency expects to soon receive the results of on-site radioactive monitoring. The report came a day after an electrical transformer at a similar disposal facility in the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv was damaged. Such facilities typically hold low-level radioactive materials such as waste from hospitals and industry. But Grossi says the two incidents highlight a very real risk. He says if the sites are damaged, there could be potentially severe consequences for human health and the environment. Canberra, Australia Australia will provide lethal military equipment to Ukraine to help the Ukrainians resist the Russian invasion. The Australian government's announcement Monday gave no details on what material it may be sending. The move follows an offer on Friday of non-lethal military equipment, medical supplies, and a $3 million contribution to a NATO trust fund for the support of the besieged country. Australia has imposed sanctions on more than 350 Russian individuals, including Russian President Vladimir Putin since Thursday. Australia has also targeted with sanctions 13 individuals and entities in Belarus, including that country's defense minister, Viktor Krenin. Belarus is supporting Russia in its war with Ukraine. Toronto, the two largest media companies in Canada are dropping Russian state TV channel RT from their cable offerings. Rogers spokesman Andrew Garris says Russia Today will no longer be available on its channel lineup as of Monday. The Bell Media Company also is removing RT. Canadian Heritage Minister Pablo Rodriguez is commending the action, saying Russia has been conducting warfare in Ukraine since 2014 and information warfare across the world. He says RT is the propaganda arm of Russian President Vladimir Putin's regime that spreads disinformation. The European Central Bank said early Monday that the bank had 13.6 billion euros in assets at the end of last year, but has experienced significant deposit outflows due to geopolitical tensions. The ECB says Vienna headquartered Esper Bank Europe AG is likely to be unable to pay its debts or other liabilities as they fall due. The bank is a fully owned subsidiary of Russia's Esper Bank, whose majority shareholder is the Russian government. Europe's Bank Resolution Board separately says it has imposed a payments ban on money owed by the bank and a limit on how much depositors can withdraw. The board will decide on further steps, which could include restructuring, selling, or liquidating the bank. Esper Bank Europe operates 185 branches and has more than 3,933 employees. Kyiv, Ukraine Ukraine's Interior Ministry says 352 Ukrainian civilians have been killed during Russia's invasion, including 14 children. It says an additional 1,684 people, including 116 children, have been wounded. He Ministry's statement Sunday does not give any information on casualties among Ukraine's armed forces. Russia has claimed that its troops are targeting only Ukrainian military facilities and says that Ukraine's civilian population is not in danger. Russia has not released any information on casualties among its troops. The Russian Defense Ministry acknowledged on Sunday only that Russian soldiers have been killed and wounded, without giving any numbers.